Here we are at TRS today, and you have the host who loves headlights the most. Guys, I'm TRS Matt, and today we're talking about the brand new two-stroke 3.0 LED bulbs from our friends at Morimoto. Guys, these bulbs come with a new philosophy in LED bulb thinking. These bulbs are not the brightest bulbs out there in the aftermarket, but what they do for you is they create a linear improvement that's proportionate to the original bulbs in their original optics when you put them inside of your headlights or your fog lights. And that is what really makes them special compared to other options out there. You've seen videos from other shops out there like Headlight Revolution that test different LED bulbs and different applications to find out which one is the best for you and why. Because, well, inconsistency. You've seen movements like the wall shots are dead thing in places like Headlight Junkies posted by OG members who know a little bit more than the rest of the crowd because why? Judging beam patterns on walls is kind of an old school way of thinking. It doesn't exactly add up. If you know anything about automotive lighting and the way it should work, then you'll know better than to judge real world performance by the peak intensity in a hotspot and nothing more. Take for example a laser powered high beam or something like a profile high lens LED projector for a retrofit. Crazy bright hotspot, but does that mean all around good visibility? Nope, not really. Put an arc reactor in your D2S projector. Bright AF, but good beam pattern and good all around visibility? I don't think so. So here's the deal. You might find a different LED bulb out there that might have a little bit more intensity in the hot spot, but that bulb will also produce too much intensity in the foreground. And so your ability to really leverage that brighter intensity in the hot spot at a distance on the road will be compromised because your eyes are going to adjust to that brighter light in the foreground, compromising your overall ability to see far into the distance. The two stroke 3.0 is designed to provide a consistent improvement across all points in the beam pattern to ensure a smooth proportionate upgrade. That is the key here. Morimoto engineer Yoshi Ishida spent a lot of time honing this concept into what he calls the FDR score that compares the foreground intensity to the intensity at a distance. Modeled in various OEM optics from popular trucks like the Ram, F-150, etc., the two stroke prevails. Morimoto was super innovative here and these bulbs are carefully protected with patents pending. There will be no equivalents coming anytime soon. Now I do have to make it clear that these bulbs are not street legal for use in headlights here in North America. Exclusively off-road vehicles only, one that is never driven on the streets. They are however 100% street legal for use in a fog light. Alright guys, so superior results don't just come with a philosophy around the way these things are designed. There's a lot of actual engineering that went into this product to make it better than everything else out there. All right, so first things first, the surface emission interval on these bulbs is smaller than any other bulb out there in the market. It's actually only two millimeters, which includes the thickness of the PCB in the middle and the two LED chips on the side. These are using an Osram HKL LED emitter, which is a 5500K automotive grade LED chip. To my knowledge, I haven't seen it on any other LED bulbs either. The LEDs produce 2600 lumens of light from just 22 watts of power per bulb. Now another thing that I like about these bulbs and makes them unique is that there was a lot of engineering that went into each specific size in the range. Now you've got of course your H11s, H4, 9005, H7, etc. And not one focal reference difference was used to set the distance between the base and the LED chip. Each one is optimized according to the focus length of the original incandescent bulb that it's designed to replace. That is not the case in most of the aftermarket. Most companies use one focal reference distance and they apply it across all bulbs. It's kind of a lazy way of doing it. Morimoto did not take that route here and that's awesome. In order to make full use of the reflector or projector optics in every housing, all of the bases across the entire range are fully rotatable. So you have 360 degrees of rotation, no matter if it's H4, 9005, H11, you name it. Now the, the rotation mechanism is a little bit different depending on whether the bulb twists to lock or actually uses a clip type mechanism to lock it in like an H7 or an H4. But at the end of the day, you'll be able to make sure that those LED emitters face completely side to side, three in the nine o'clock position to optimize the output in your headlights. Something else that's really cool and unique to these bulbs is that they have a very unique thermal exchanger system that actually sucks cold air into one side of the front of the bulb, exchanges the heat in the back and then blows warm air out the front side. And although this obviously does its job to cool off the PCB and keep the LEDs running cool, um, and also does double duty to actually heat the ambient temperature inside of the headlight assembly. Now, this F-150 headlight right here next to me has been running for quite some time. And if I put my hand on the front lens here, you can actually feel it's kind of warm. Um, and so people who drive in inclement weather um, and want to do an LED upgrade, they can actually do that with the two-stroke LEDs because it'll allow them the ability to melt snow and slush and stuff like that that would otherwise build up on the front side of your headlight lens. 
Most other LED bulbs will exchange heat out the back, which is completely wasted because it does nothing for you going into an already warm engine bay. So not only does it make the system more reliable because the fan itself is completely enclosed, there's no chance of any grime or anything like that getting in there and jamming it up, but it also helps by warming the front lens of the headlight, which is just an added benefit, really. All right, now I gotta hand it to Morimoto. The LED drivers also look awesome on these bulbs, but I think the beauty is actually more on the inside than the out. Uh, now, of course, from the outside, uh, they have this nice gold finish, um, and the thing is die cast. It's not an extruded shell, which is more common. What that allows them to do is fill the entire shell with potting compounds so that it makes a completely moisture-proof um, and weatherproof LED driver shell to enclose the PCB inside. And the PCB is actually pretty special too because this is actually a DRL capable LED driver. What that means is that when the uh, power going into the bulb is a stable uh, one to six volts, the bulb will actually run at about 10% uh, of the intensity that it otherwise would at anything over six volts. So when the intensity from the circuit drops below six volts, the light output immediately drops to create a daytime running light setting for the LEDs. And when it's above six volts, you get full 100% output. That again, completely unique to the two-stroke 3.0. Never seen that before in any other bulb. Certain bulbs in the two-stroke 3.0 range have special features that make them unlike anything else out there. Take for example, the H11 bulb that features an OEM style tension spring on the base that pushes the entire bulb downward with about five Newton meters worth of force. If you look at your original incandescent halogen bulbs, they also have this little tension spring built into the base so that when you rotate it to lock it in, it just gives you this nice, real positive feel, a good snap, lets you know that it's locked in and seated properly. Normally speaking, any LED bulb, of course, including an H4, is just gonna illuminate off to the left and to the right and hope that you're hitting most of the uh, important facets inside of the headlight reflector. But because of the special engineering that's been put into this H4 bulb, the optics inside of the shade cup actually direct a lot of light that would otherwise be wasted vertically above the bulb, providing a more intense and overall complete beam pattern for people with H4 optics. Now I gotta admit, when I first started thinking about the two-stroke 3.0 LED bulbs, I was like, is there really that many new things about an LED bulb that would impress anybody these days? You know, you guys like me, we've seen it all. LED bulbs are not a new thing by today's standards, uh, but Morimoto has really managed to pack a lot of unique, special features into the two-stroke 3.0 LED bulbs that really do make them stand out compared to everything else that's floating around there in the aftermarket. So if you are in the market for a new set of LED bulbs for your fog lights or off-road vehicle, I would absolutely recommend checking out the new two-stroke 3.0. Because of all the engineering that really went into this product, there'll be a guaranteed upgrade over your original incandescent bulbs, no matter where it is that you intend to put them. Two-stroke 3.0 review complete. That's it for me, guys. I'm TRS Matt. I'm out. Like and subscribe if you like this video, and we'll see you next time.